and welcome to Parker Is My Town. I'm Ann Barrington with the Barrington Group Real Estate and a member of Parkertown Council. And today I'm here with three business owners from Parker, and we'll be getting to know a little bit more about them and their businesses. And then next week, we are going to learn what their thoughts are on the My Main Street project. So I guess I'm just going to jump right in, and I think I'll start with Susan. So this is Susan Bertaki. And Susan is with Kilwin's Chocolate and Ice Cream. And then we also have Dawn Danner. And she owns the Nest Salon and Boutique. And then Josh Rivero. And he owns uh, Fika Coffee House 1 and 2. So, you know, I'm lucky enough to know all three of you in very different ways. So I thought it would just be fun if the town, and if everybody gets to know you guys a little bit better, and we can let you talk a little bit about your business. Great. Great. Excellent. So, Susan, I have been in your store several times, and your staff is always so friendly and welcoming, and I do try to avoid <laughs> it for myself. You're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I and especially after the holidays, I, I'm going to need to avoid it a little bit it's more. It's a slow time of year right now. <laughs> but I do go in very often for closing gifts, yes, and you do. guys always put together amazing baskets for me. So why don't you tell me a little bit or tell us a little bit about <clears throat> Kilwins? Um, I know you own this with your husband, and he is a surgeon mm -hmm. at uh, Centura Parker Adventist. Yes. And so you opened this up with him, and tell us a little bit about that. Why Parker? So we moved from Parker from New York City. I grew up in Brooklyn and moved to Queens, and I was a physician assistant, and he's a surgeon. We met each other as he was going through his residency at um, a little hospital in Queens. And when we decided we wanted to get married, we made a big move. To, to Colorado, to Parker. So we were both recruited to work at Parker Adventist. And we did that for a couple of years until we started a family. And at that point, I decided um, I didn't want to be tied down to my job. So I uh, decided to do something a little bit more flexible. And actually, this is my third business here in Parker. But we'll focus on Kilwins and just say that um, my other two businesses were in downtown Parker. And I knew I wanted a spot in downtown Parker. So uh, we stumbled across um, across this little little spot that you know of, you know, across the street from the gazebo, and it was the perfect place to open a little, a little chocolate shop, and here we are. And you are, mm -hmm. I think that's a perfect location, yeah. mm -hmm. right across from lucky. the park, and you waited for we waited a long about time. three years for that spot. Well, wow. real estate in Parker does not come easy, <laughs> commercial <laughs> real estate. Yeah. So we waited and waited, and we didn't just wait for a spot. We wait, waited for the perfect spot, and I think we found it just across the street from the park and right there in the middle of, uh, you know, where these guys are, just right. a little, little family there in the, in the downtown Main Street right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it adds so much to our downtown mm -hmm. parker. Also joining us today is Don Danner, and you are the owner of the Nest Salon and Boutique, and you're right on Main Street, and you've yep. been in Parker just a little over a year now. What well, the business has been on Main Street in Parker for since last November, so just over a year. Well, so tell us how you chose your spot because again, it's hard to find any yes. space downtown. Yes, and I, why Parker? Well, I've lived in Parker since 2000 and. Um, six and we love Parker it's I can't imagine living anywhere else um, but I have coveted that particular space since oh, really? for, for probably 20 years and it hasn't been available since 2008 and um, or the same business was there since 2008 it was actually rather by accident that 
I found out that it had come available. And we were in the process of opening somewhere else. And that came available, and I came home, and I said to my husband, you're going to think I'm nuts, <laughs> but we have to do this. And he's like, we're doing that. And I'm like, I know, but we have to do this. And we did. And it was it was a process of getting it, And but sometimes you just have to declare what you intend and want, and you have to put it out there and do it. And... And we did, and it worked out, and we are right where we're supposed to be. And we couldn't be more blessed to be where we are. Oh, well, it took me a while before I finally made it in there. Mm -hmm. And now, every time I am in your store, which is, I, I'm a frequent shopper yeah. now, yeah. Um, I find myself just giggling or laughing out loud at some of the slightly inappropriate yeah yes <laughs> but, yes but you and there's so mm -hmm. much that is appropriate for for all ages but uh, it's it's a great store thank you yes thank it's you. a lot of fun you know i really strive to have a little bit of something for everybody we we say we are the store for people with personality and um you know we it kind of came as um, a need. We, our family went through a tragedy in 2020 and I struggled to find joy and I couldn't find my own joy. And I found, you know, joy in these items that could make you laugh, even if they were slightly inappropriate. And sometimes I'd stand at the back of the store and I wouldn't have my own internal joy, but people would laugh and giggle and commune and talk to the person next to them, even if they didn't know them, <laughs> and be like, oh my gosh, did you, see, did you see this? And it was, I realized that I was like getting like their joy, and then I found a little bit of my own joy through that. So it's been, it's been as wonderful and healing for me as it's been fun to bring this to Parker, to Main Street. We're so glad you did because in this day and age with everything that we've been through just as a society, I think we yes. all need to laugh. And that's the theme. That's what everybody says when they come in. Like, oh my gosh, we just love your store. It makes us happy. It's it's a breath of fresh air. It's um, You would never think you'd find this in Douglas County. Or... <laughs> But you know what the truth is, is we all have a little bit of um, sweet and spicy mm -hmm. to us, right? And, you know, it's okay. Don't say bad words. You just have to choose where you say them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I hope uh, that everyone gets to go in there and get a little giggle out of your store. Me too. That is my hope. If you don't find something to giggle at there, I have failed miserably. So, <laughs> Oh, thank you. Well, Josh. Yes. Your turn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have known you for several years, and for the last two years, I've also had a unique opportunity to serve with you on Parker Town Council. So you and your wife, Anna, you own two coffee houses in Parker. So why don't you share with us um, how you got your start in the coffee business and why Parker? Absolutely. Um, so my family moved here in 1989, and I graduated from Ponderosa back then. And um, it was very quiet. It was a very boring town for for a young young guy. So I went to Denver and did my thing. Um, and I got started in the restaurant business, bar and restaurant businesses. And um, I ended up meeting my wife, Anna, at uh, Raria. Um, we both were going to school down there, and uh, she was here on a student visa from Sweden. So she ended up graduating in, uh, in, oh, actually she graduated in 02, I believe in 03, we decided, um, you know, why don't we try Stockholm? And so we moved back to Stockholm, um, lived over there for a few years, ended up getting married over there in 2005. And then there was this question, where are we going to start our family? Stockholm, Sweden, or Parker, Colorado? Well, we decided to come back to Parker. And then um, we ended up buying our forever home in Idlewild in uh, 06 and moved in. 
And then um, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. Like I said, I come from the bar and restaurant business, and that is not um, conducive to starting a family. So I, I was kind of caught. And I, I, I know that I was looking actually at opening a bar in Parker. There was a void down in the south part of town by Straw Ranch. There was nothing down there. I believe in neighborhood pubs and, and there was nothing down there. And I was, you know, my brother was living down there. I was like, we're going to do this. And then we just realized that that's not really good for when you start a family. So I was going into liquor sales, which is where all old bartenders go, they go to the dark side and go to liquor sales. And, and so that was my, my journey. And I started going to this little coffee shop on main street and I found out they had a Kaladi coffee, which is my favorite roaster. Started going in there. found out that they wanted to sell, um, same thing. I called my wife and said, you're not going to believe this, but we need to buy a coffee shop. She's like, what? And I said, you have to think of it as a daytime bar. You have to think of it instead of li liquor, we're selling syrups and lattes. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. I can do this. You know, I, 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 this is kind of the same realm. It's just a, it's a more family friendly realm. And so we did, uh, we bought it April 1st, 2008. We did business as 20 mile coffee with books for till December 1st. And then December 1st, we rolled out our name as Fika Coffee House. Um, and, and of uh, course, that's my next question. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us what sure. does Fika Ab mean or stand Absolutely. for? Absolutely. Um, when we first bought it, like I said, we did it business as, as 20 Mile Coffee House um, in the beginning because we were changing prices, we were changing hours, we, we were doing everything, and we didn't want to come out of the, hey, we're here. By the way, our hours just changed. Mm -hmm. So I want to figure all that out as 20 Mile and then come out as, as Fika. In that meantime, we were trying to think of a name and we were trying to think of something regional. 20 Mile didn't make sense because we weren't on 20 Mile. Main Street coffee seemed rather cliche. All of a sudden it came to us. Fika is a Swedish verb. It means to meet over coffee. It's to fika. Um, it's a slang verb. It, it came from who knows where. It's lots of different theories on where it came from. And then now the light, latest generation has even taken off the verb tense, which is the A. And, and F-I-K, fik, is a slang word for a coffee shop. Um, so it's in, in Swedish, it, it would be skavi fika. It means you want to go grab a cup of coffee and it's to meet over coffee and to converse over coffee. So if we had coffee in front of us, this would be a fika. Mm -hmm. So, um, we just worked, we wanted something that would stick and, and, you know, it, the greatest thing that we can hear is when people say, um, I love fika. And then the person next to them, not me, the person, another person will say, no, 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 it's fika. And then you've got this army of people that go around correcting people on how to pronounce yes, the name, but, but that <laughs> sticks, right? I mean, that's a, that's a branding yeah. opportunity. So it, it, it worked out really, really well. And um, yeah, we're very, very proud of it. It's a, it's a great little coffee shop. I don't think that anyone doesn't know Fika. Thanks. So anytime that I'm meeting somewhere, I'm like, there's this little coffee shop on Main Street. Main Street, have you heard of it? And um, they're like, oh, of course. <laughs> Everybody knows where that. It's the one with the wine. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. yes, this is true. It That's hurts. It's a good problem. It is a good problem. It hurts my heart, though, because I just see this line. I'm like, can we just it serve faster? Fast. It does, it so does. that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. It moves very fast. So yeah. don't be disappointed by the, by the line. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's that's a, that's much better than the alternative. It's true. Yes, this is true. Which, and I know that you went through that back in 2008 with the construction that was yeah. going on on Main Street. Absolutely. And, and you definitely had some growing pains, you know, you back did. with the economy and... Yeah, it was, it was, a, if we opened in April, um, as I said, um, shortly after that, the town um, started, you know, what I call the Parker Big Dig, where they tore up all of Maine, as, as a lot of us remember, and they put in new sidewalks and a new uh, street stormwater system. And um, I had done my due diligence and I knew it was coming and I, I looked forward to the improvements of the sidewalks. Um, I didn't want to lose the medians, but it was a, it was a byproduct. Um, but it, 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 it was tough. And then, of course, as everybody knows, September, October, we had the recession start. And uh, the thing that, that I learned, though, is that people throughout the recession and then, and then throughout um, COVID, people need to see people. Um, they need to converse. They, they need to get together. They need to, um, to meet people. And so people will, they might not drink a latte. They might just have a cup of coffee if they want to save money. But it's very, very important to them to get out and, and hang out. And so coffee is uh, a very uh, – <laughs> strong market. It, it, it's one of the last things, though, as has been said, January and February kind of dip. Mm -hmm. People have those unfortunate resolutions or they spent too much money in December. Mm -hmm. They come back in March. It'll, it'll work out. But you know, right now is a little bit of a slow time. But you know, people, people get a, a habit. And that was hard with uh, the recession. And then with, um, with COVID was 
people start to change their habits and you don't want that. You want them to keep in, in, in the same kind of thing. So it turned out well. Yeah, being in the real estate business in um, 2008, I opened up my first office in November of 2008, yes. <laughs> two weeks after Lehman Brothers had closed their doors. So I cried a latte. <laughs> yeah, a latte. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> Susan, can you share with us why chocolate? What had you? Did you know the store or the store type that you were going to open up? Um, do you have a passion for chocolate? Tell us a little bit about. But yeah, just about well, your passion for chocolate. Who or who doesn't like chocolate? Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no chocolate, like coffee, is um, you know it's a product that people just love and that people don't need but they do need, right? So um, during a recession, I've been told that beer <laughs> and cigarettes and coffee and ice cream <laughs> will be okay. <laughs> recession proof. <laughs> right. We happen to have opened a few months before COVID hit. And that year, we've only been open three years, but that year was our best year. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I don't know if you can relate, but I mean, we, we did deliveries and you know, it was close to Easter when COVID hit and people weren't going to the Walmart to get their Easter baskets. They wanted them delivered to their house. So we made hundreds of Easter baskets and my surgeon husband delivered the Easter baskets <laughs> to people's homes. Some of them, coincidentally, his patients. <laughs> and he got some good tips. <laughs> it was quite funny. And uh, we just rolled with it. And, um, you know, Praise God, we we did okay. But regarding the chocolate, um, I think that was by default. I knew I wanted to open a business in downtown Parker. I just love downtown Parker. I knew that's where I belonged. And I had been working for Parker Task Force for about three years, um, full-time over there. And uh, you didn't know that? Mm -mm. So uh, I worked over there, and then Steve Budnock, who is the director over there, he said, Susan, you're you're very social, and he's not, you know, <laughs> he's not. So <clears throat> I was kind of his right hand man there for a little bit. And he, he said, you need to be our ambassador. Go out and talk about Parker Task Force. So I would, I don't know if you remember, but I, I took every opportunity at every, I don't know, every meeting, I, every gathering that was going on, kind of networking event, um, to talk about Parker Task Force. And people knew me as the Parker Task Force girl. Um, and I really did become very close or, you know, acquainted with most of the businesses in downtown Parker. And uh, coincidentally, at that time, we were looking at opening up a business. Um, and I was up in Boulder on Pearl Street. My family and I were up there one day. And my kids wanted ice cream. And we had promised them ice cream. So the closest ice cream place, the closest ice cream shop there was, was a Kilwins. Kilwins is a franchise. So I said to my husband, we got, we got to get going. Let's just pick the closest place, you know. So the Kilwins was there and we walked in and we all got some ice cream. We're an ice cream kind of family. And uh, we walked out and we're starting to walk to the car. And my husband said, this is the best ice cream I've ever had. You know, and here we are in our 50s. Ooh, that this is the best chill. ice cream he's ever eaten. And um, and I had my pralines and cream, and I said, this is really good ice cream. And he said, he said, well, they had some other things. You know, it wasn't just an ice cream place. They had chocolate, you know, a lot of other things going on. I think they were making caramel apples at the time. We were in such a rush to get the kids back, you know, to get, to get back home. Uh, we turned around, and we went back to the store, and then... The wheels started turning. Okay, Parker needs this. And if anybody can do it, we we can do it. So applications started going in. And long story short, we were approved. And the reason why we were approved because was because the, um, the uh, owner of the franchise actually came to Parker. And we were sitting in Parker Garage looking across to where our potential space would be, if you know that angle. And we could also see Fika. And there was a line outside of Fika. <laughs> and the owner of, of 
the franchise of of Kilwin's franchise, uh, Don McCarty, he looked over and he said, "I think I'll approve you based on that." So, oh, wow, you, that line? <laughs> you didn't know that story? No. Okay, so, so wow. he said the rest of it. Yeah, he said the rest of it needs some work yeah. because it, there was nothing going yeah. on. Uh, I think it was the it was actually the March before that big. Um, Bomb cyclone. Remember that yep, bomb cyclone that happened in, I guess it was yeah. 19 or so? Uh, it was <gasps> like the weekend before that was gorgeous. It was like in the 50s or 60s even. And yeah. then that Wednesday we got hit. So it was great timing. And wow. your place was busy. Wow. <laughs> At lunch of all times. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we were approved. And um, the rest is history. But chocolate is just by default. I mean, I love chocolate. And Kilwin's, even in just three years, has evolved. You know, it, it was a passion for owning a small business in Parker. It was a passion for being social with the people that I really enjoyed being with. And it's turned into almost a, a mentoring of um, of my staff. My staff is mostly, they're mostly high school students. And this is what, I, I mean, I never knew, you know, God works in mysterious ways. And now this is my passion. My passion is to uh, mentor my my students, my my employees, teach them about small business, teach them about profits and losses and hard times and good times and busy times and slow times and, and all that. So um, that's what I enjoy most. Um, the chocolate is just the byproduct of a business that I love. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. That is a great byproduct. And I guess speaking of chocolate, we have a holiday com- coming up that is notorious for, for chocolate. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you have going on for Valentine's Day, or I, I, I'm assuming you do something for Oh, we do, yes. So um, we are the only boutique chocolate shop in Parker, in, in all of Parker, not just downtown. Um, so we must dip chocolate covered strawberries for Valentine's Day and we do and we do it well I mean we we temper our own chocolate and um, where are and, they oh I yeah well, <laughs> it wasn't that kind of a day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry no, actually we actually get our strawberries from California so I don't have any of the real nice ones that that we get we get them imported so a trucker drives from from uh, a f- the farmer actually <laughs> drives from California and delivers our strawberries. Oh, Last wow. year we dipped 243 pounds of strawberries for Parker and beyond. Wow. And we do corporate gifting, uh, all that. Like I said, we, we do temper our own chocolate. So we have white chocolate, milk chocolate, and dark chocolate. So when you order your chocolate covered strawberries, you can specify which type of chocolate you want. And uh, we'll box it up for you in a, uh, one of our beautiful boxes with a nice ribbon. And, you know, where I come from in New York City, there are many, you know, you walk outside of your door and there's a boutique shop for every product that you need, right? So details matter. You know, the bow matters. The placement of the strawberries matter. The way they're dipped and striped matters. We're not just, you know, throwing strawberries and chocolate and and putting them in a box. That's that's not me. Um, it needs to be beautiful. We tell our staff, everything you do, just make believe it's for your grandmother. Mm. You know, when you're boxing something up, would grandma like that? You know, is that the way grandma would want you to do it? And they remember that. And I see some of them making their bows. Okay, grandma. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> making this for you. So details matter and just, you know, it's important for for your gift to be beautiful. No, oh, and I appreciate that so much because I it, we had to put or I wanted to put a name on the service that we provide as a real estate company and until you experience something it's kind of hard to to know what you don't know. Right. But so I named uh, the experience for my business the Red Bow experience. It's kind of like the cherry on top because mm-hmm. we wrap every door with a big red bow. And so your business just works perfectly for a closing gift. And That's right. So thank you for doing mm-hmm. what you do. Dawn, yeah. can you share with us what we might find at the nest and what you kind of told us already about what inspired you to, to open up your store 
And again, we're so thankful that that you did. Do you have anything special that you do for Valentine's well, You've only had one Valentine's Day at this location. Right. Are you planning anything for this Valentine's Day? So we have put together a few um, box gift box items that we can ship out. Um, we have one for Galentine's, um, a box that we've curated. I didn't bring that. It was a little more naughty. Um, <laughs> And then we have... Well, you've piqued <laughs> everyone's interest now. <laughs> yes. Um, I didn't figure you'd appreciate that. <laughs> um, and then we have one for kids. Um, we've got some cute little cookies. Actually, I brought a couple of the items. Do you want me to let's, show you? Let's see them. Okay. So we, um, we have just some little fun things in the... Some cookies... In our kid box, these are just fun little erasers. My kids are huge eraser kids. Um, just curated. Um, you can get all sorts of options. Sidewalk chalk that looks like popsicles. Oh, right? how fun. So fun things like that. Um, and then we have, you know, we have a little bit of love something for anybody. If you wanted to love on your neighbor, if you wanted to love on your girlfriend. And we do get a lot of that friends gifting other friends, not just, you know, romantic love. I think it's important to focus on all kinds of love, right? Because we all can benefit from from that. Yes. Yeah. Well, and speaking of, I have to show you what a friend of mine got me for Christmas. Yes. <laughs> that is one of our Parker top selling spice. items. Yes. <laughs> Real housewives. Of yes. We, yep, we have those, that. and those are one of our most gifted items. But this has become one of my favorite, and it fits in the cup holder. Yes, it does. Bar. That's so very important. It is important, mm -hmm. yes. and I didn't realize how important it was until yes. I didn't mm -hmm. have that. Yes. As a matter of fact, um, Oddly enough, that wasn't my initial direction was all of my local stuff. Like I knew I would have a little, um, but that is some of my best sellers. So my Real Moms of, um, Real Housewives of Parker and my Parker, like the, anything that's um, like 80138 or 80134 or 80138 or our Parker merchandise um, has really taken off. And one thing I didn't realize and, this is probably foolish of me, but how many people bring their people to Main Street? Anybody that has anybody that comes in from out of town, we are, Main Street's a destination. And that has been the greatest fun is meeting everybody's grandmas and everybody's aunts and uncles. And from the, the mayor's cousin to I mean, sister, I mean, all the people come in and they take a little bit of Parker home with them. So we have ornaments and stickers and T-shirts and just all the fun Parker things. And that's been really fun to see locals and non-locals together get excited about the local merchandise. Yeah, and I can see how that would be a great closing gift as well. Absolutely. For all the other realtors that might be watching. Absolutely. And we can do branded things and, you know. Best like yeah, together. Absolutely. Right. With so. some coffee, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> coffee is part of the shopping experience. Absolutely. You've got to have energy shop, to shop. Yeah, get some coffee. We were actually <laughs> talking that we <clears throat> might put a small table in the front of our store for people to set their coffee on yeah. because it <laughs> is, that's the routine, is coffee right. and or chocolate or ice cream. And then they come over and they wander through the store. Or and only they, have one hand. Yeah. I've done and it. then they sit on my front porch and... Enjoy their coffee. That's my favorite is when I find people on my front porch just enjoying ice cream or because we, we, if I may brag, we have the best porch on you do. Main Street. You, yes. It's amazing. And it's my most favorite thing. It's just we want it to be inviting. We love when people just mm -hmm. come and sit and visit. Josh, yes. do you guys do anything for Valentine's Day? Um, we don't per se run specials, but we do have merchandise. People are, are obviously welcome to come in. We do gift baskets if people are looking for something like that. Um, we have mugs and thermoses and, and all kinds of branded stuff. Um, we offer gift certificate, gift cards, excuse me, and we do have, we will have a Valentine's specific gift card. And then online we do, which is took off during COVID is the electronic gift cards um, okay. through our, our, our uh, point of sale service offers an electronic gift card. And it is, I mean, if grandma who lives in Minnesota wants to buy 
her, her daughter who lives in Parker a gift card. It works out well. Um, so it, it is, it, it's been a really good thing during COVID. And then uh, now people just uh, get constant emails, probably two or three in my email box right now. Can, can I buy my daughter a gift card? So it's worked out really, really well for uh, for people to, to give gifts. And closing gifts. And closing gifts. <laughs> and then we'll run. I have to get um, that in there all the time. Like that. We'll run seasonal drinks. Mm-hmm. My staff comes up with some creative, mm-hmm. creatively named right. drinks. And I'm sure they'll come up with a Valentine's uh, February drink. Mm-hmm you'll see on our board that changes uh, monthly. So they can go to Dawn's Nest Salon and Boutique, run across the street to Fika, get a gift card, then go around the corner and get them all packaged up with their chocolate. Perfect. All the things. (laughs) Done. All wrapped up on Main Street. (laughs) So we are out of time for this episode. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode and... I hope you'll come back and join us next week where we are going to continue with these uh, three business owners and they will be telling us their thoughts on the My Main Street project. So thank you and we'll see you next time.